Hi everyone, welcome to another Ashtown Creations tutorial. My name is Stephanie and in this video we are making the Aphrodite Versa Bag by Needle and Anchor. I just love the classy look of this bag. When you purchase the pattern you will receive instructions for a beginner friendly version which has a solid front panel and closes with magnetic snaps. The other set of instructions are a little more of an intermediate level. It has a half circle cutout with top trim pieces that work like a handle, and it can have either magnetic snaps or a hex flex frame closure. The one that we are making in the video has the magnetic snap closure with the half circle trim cutout and trim, as well as a crossbody strap, an interior zippered pocket, and a slip pocket. I have ordered a flex frame and we'll do an extra video with the creation of the specific frame top trim design and the actual frame installation once it, it has arrived. For this specific bag, the exterior main panel is quilting cotton that I've had in my stash for quite a while just waiting for the right bag. The faux leather trim pieces and strap are all more of faux leather from Emmeline Bags. The hardware is a light gold, also from Emmeline. The lining is a lightweight waterproof canvas from Mimi's Fabrics. I will add links to the pattern and all of the materials in the description box below. I will also list the timestamps so you can jump to the section that you need. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and select the notification bell to be notified when new content is available. Please leave any questions or comments in the comments section below. I will do my best to respond as soon as I possibly can. Thank you to Carissa from Needle and Anchor for allowing me to record this tutorial for you. So stick with me to see how this bag is made. All right, let's go through the pieces for this Aphrodite Versa bag. In the center here, I have my exterior panel A. I have done it in a quilting cotton. I've interfaced it with a woven interfacing and I have two pieces. Over here I have the bottom trim piece that will go on here. Um, it's more of faux leather and it has not been interfaced. I don't believe that will need to be interfaced, but we do have um, trim facing for it. So the trim facing will go along the edge here and fold inwards to make a nice clean edge so we don't have any raw edges. The bias trim facing is actually being cut on the bias and I've got mine in quilting cotton. I have four half circle trims. The half circle trim will go around the half circle cutout for the exterior panel. There are four of them and I have them uh, stabilized with a Decaville light. Also for the half circle trim, we have half circle, the facing pieces. So there's four facing pieces to go with the four trim pieces. And again, it's to give it a nice clean edge inside. I've also done that in quilting cotton. We have in more of faux leather, a, um, the gusset piece, which is where we'll be adding strap connectors that will hold our cross body strap. So in the crossbody strap, there are two pieces to it. One's longer than the other, and one, this one's wider than that one. And I will show how this all goes together later. For the top of the bag above the cutout, so across, we've got um, top trim pieces. So all the top trim pieces have um, Decaville light a strip of Decaville light down the center. And on two of the four, so there's four pieces total, I have marked where my magnetic snaps are gonna go. So there are two options with this bag, magnetic snap closure and a hex frame closure. The hex flame frame I do not have at the moment. I have ordered one and we'll do a separate video um, showing how to install the hex frame. Um, but for now, I'm just doing the magnetic snaps. So with magnetic snaps, you have four of these pieces of the trim pieces, and it's a little different if you're doing the hex frame. So that's everything. Oh, and then once the um, exterior has been put together, I will be fusing on some Decaville light onto the inside of this piece to give it some structure. 
So that's everything for the outside of the bag. All right, for the lining of the bag, we have, I have decided to go with a, a waterproof canvas, but it's a lightweight, it's not Ottertex, it's a thinner version of waterproof canvas. Um, I haven't interfaced it, I don't believe I need to interface it, I think it'll be fine on its own. On the inside we have a zipper pocket, and this is the zipper pocket facing. I do not have it interfaced with anything. The zipper pocket has two pieces after the facing, so there's two pieces to the actual pocket itself. The top piece here, and the bottom, the main piece, which will get folded up, and in, here's where the zipper will go, and then this will get folded up on the other side to create the pocket. Um, I've done this in quilting cotton, and I have interfaced it with the woven interfacing, both pieces. I also, for the zipper pocket, have the zipper tape and zipper. And we also have a faux trim slip pocket. So the outside of the slip pocket will be this waterproof canvas. And then this, uh, the lining of the slip pocket will be um, my quilting cotton. I have interfaced it as well with woven interfacing. And it's, this one's a little smaller than that piece so that a little bit, the faux trim will be this piece sticking out a bit above. So we'll see something like, well, after you stitch it, something like that. We'll see a little bit of what's at the top poking out on that. Also, there's it, uh, I'm putting a crossbody strap on it, so I've got my cross my D rings, three quarter uh, three quarter inch D rings, and then I also have three quarter of an inch swivel snaps or swivel hooks. And as I mentioned, I'm doing the magnetic version, so I've got my my magnets. I think these are the 18 millimeter magnets they're not slim ones they are just uh, regular with the washers and i also have my ashtown creations bag label so that's everything we need for the bag so let's get sewing all right so our first step is going to be adding the facing pieces to the um bottom trim piece so I've got my two bottom trim pieces and I've got my uh, two facing pieces and I'm just going to start adding it on. This is on the bias so it should follow along the, the edge okay and it's I think a little bit longer than it needs to be. So I'm just going to start it with a little off the end a little bit here and then I'm going to just clip the, them together trying to keep the edges, the raw edges lined up. So in doing this, the edges of your facing may flip up. That's fine. We will be trimming it down and release, releasing the pressure on it afterwards. So do both of them and then we'll move on to sewing. So I've been putting it right side together if I didn't say that before. There we go. Now I'm going to be adding or now I'm going to stitch it at an with an eighth of an inch seam allowance so we don't want to take a lot of the um a lot away from the fi uh, from the accent piece so um we're going to do a very small seam allowance here so just stick it under my needle and sew it at an eighth of an inch and we want to use a a joining stitch length so a smaller one not a top stitching because um, we don't we want to make sure that we get it all I'm using a three and a half stitch length for this Kurt and back stitch at the beginning and the end of your seams Now that we have this on, I will do I will do the second one off camera. Now that we have this on, we're going to fold the um, facing away from the seam line, but we want to keep our seam allowance going towards the facing. We're going to do something called under stitching, and under stitching is stitching on the back of something. It will try and keep it. It's usually used to help keep 
the lining of something or in this case the facing back towards the back. So we're going to actually stitch right on the facing piece on through the seam allowance as well and that should help it keep it towards the back and we want to pull the fabric gently away from the edge so that we have a nice clean line to stitch through. So again it's about a little eighth of an inch or a little bit less and I'm going to back stitch again. Now we have it understitched. We want to bring the uh, facing back to the back and we want the we want the edge of the facing to be down in towards the back side like that. So in the pattern, um, they use, uh, Carissa uses double-sided tape. Um, I'm gonna, I am gonna use double-sided tape on this one, uh, but you could probably also use like a Fabri-Tac or a Beacon 3-in-1 glue. It might take a little bit longer and it might seep through, but it, it should actually still work. So I'm going to take, this is a little less than a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna take a bunch of this and put it along um, the edge so that we can pull this facing toward the back. And I suppose you could trim it down right now, but this just gives you extra little bit to hold on to. Maybe I need to put this a little further away. Yeah, a little further away from the edge. Oh, well, it's there now. I'll just put a little bit more on. So I put it, yeah, out a little bit further. And actually the instructions do say to trim the uh, facing between a half inch and three quarters of an inch. So I'll trim it down now to about a half inch. Okay, and now I'm going to take the tape off or take the backing off the tape all the way along. And now I'm going to start in the center and fold the facing towards the back. And again, I want to have a nice clean edge at the top. And I'm going to actually just clip it because I don't think I got my tape out far enough, but I want to make sure I hold the, um, hold the fold over on here. So. So if you have any sections, mine's pretty good, but if you have any sections where it's sticking up or it's pulling, you can snip in here to reduce, to relieve some of the stress. Mine's pretty good. I don't have any spots that are really sticking out. So yeah, you, you can just don't trim, don't clip your stitch line. All right, so off screen, I went ahead and finished the other um, bottom trim piece and um, I've trimmed the excess facing off the back of it. I tried gluing it and it worked about as well as the um, uh, double-sided tape. So it's six, one half dozen. So now we wanna take our exterior front piece or back, doesn't matter, one of the exterior pieces and we want to line up the edges. So we want to make sure that the curve of the um, bottom piece fits in nicely. And I think you have to stretch it a little bit to make it fit. So I'm just going to clip that there. And then I'm going to clip in the, just put a clip in the corner. I'm going to take one out of here and put it more in the center on the bottom. And then I'm going to come over to this side and try and get this side to fit nicely. So, so we want it to sit nicely on the bag. There are dots on the pattern pieces for where this should go. I forgot to transfer my dots. That's why I'm just making it fit like this. So I've come over and I've stretched it over to that side. And now I'll put another one here and maybe one in the center. So we're gonna go ahead 
and I'm going to, normally we would go and top stitch first and then baste. I am going to go put it on a number five stitch length and I'm going to stitch around the outside first because we want to make sure that this stays in place. Once this is in place, it'll keep this pretty even. So with, the, with your uh, longer stitch length, get it under your needle and eighth of an inch seam allowance. So like basting. Usually we baste it about eighth of an inch and I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to try and keep this bottom piece pulled over to the edge and I'll go all the way around I know I've gone, I've sped up the video but go slow so that on all of this so that you get a really nice edge and a really nice stitch line. So now I'm going to top stitch this onto um, my main, my front piece. All right, so as I was going around that uh, the top stitching part, um, I was pulling, like I was flattening everything out because we don't want it to be wonky. I mean, it's already going a little wonky, but that's that'll flatten out so just keep it slow I'll go right along the edge and make sure that this is all flat while you're doing it so go ahead and do the other piece and then the other side and then we'll move on to the next step okay for the next step we are going to be sewing the half circle so we're going to sew the facing onto the half circle piece so we're going to put right sides together and I am going to clip, now I'm actually gonna clip along the inside because we will be sewing this outside curve. Actually, I'll flip mine the other way. And I'm going to be sewing it with the fabric, the cotton facing piece down where my feed dogs are because um, it's less stable than the, the full leather. So it, um, it will, the feed dogs will help pull it through a little bit better. So we're gonna stitch it on. So I'm at a three and a half stitch length. I'm gonna stitch it on with a um, th quarter inch seam allowance. And I will um, back stitch at the beginning and the end of the seam. Now that we have it stitched on, you can either take your pinking shears if you have them or just your scissors and we want to notch this curve. So I'm just going to cut around. I think I'm leaving, I'm taking off about an eighth of an inch, leaving an eighth of an inch all the way around the curve. There we go. And un we're not going to on this one, we're not understitching it. It's too tight of a curve. So we're going to hope that we get everything to the back. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to actually, yeah, I'm going to trim my facing piece down so that I take off. So that's about a half of an inch wide ish, half to three quarters of an inch wide. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect, although you will, you can, in some fabrics, you can see the, um, see it through, see the facing through the vinyl or full leather or whatever you use. Although this does have the, the, um, Decaville light in it, so we should be okay. But anyway, so I cut it down to whatever, and now I'm going to work on flipping it to the back and then making sure that it rolls over just about as much as the um, front facing, bottom facing piece, or bottom accent piece, trim piece. So yeah, we're gonna make sure that it folds over like this. I'm gonna go through after and put, it says uh, double-sided tape. So either double-sided tape or um, glue if you have it. I'm not sure a glue stick would be strong enough to hold it. I'm going to go down to the other end now and start from there and work my way back. So I'm going to um, get some double-sided tape or glue and glue this in or and stick it in place. I'm going to do that off camera 
And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing to all four pieces. So all four um, of my exterior half circle trim, I will be adding on the facing, doing exactly the same steps. So, and then we'll move on once that's done. All right, I have all of my um, half circle trim pieces. I've got them stitched together on the long side, turned the facing to the back, and I've glued and clipped them. So I should be able to take this off now. So I'm going to take the clips off, and we're going to work on attaching them to the front, to the front of the bag, and to the lining of the bag. So, so we need to dry fit it first. So I'm going to flip this one over, and flip my front piece over and then try and figure out how it best fits in this section, how it best fits this curve. Um, and so that it looks nice. I want to match up the tops and I want it to evenly cover the opening. So now that I've got it there, I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to mark approximately where it falls. So I've got a marks on there. I don't know if you can see my marks. It's hard on the dark. So anyways, I've marked here and now I'm just going to check and see how we've got, I've got about three eighths of an inch on that side and three eighths on that side. So that's pretty much centered. So I'm going to flip my, my piece over, my exterior piece over, and I'm going to take some Mm, I'm going to actually take my really thin, because I only have three-eighths of an inch, um, I'm going to use my thin double-sided leather tape. And I'm going to put a few pieces around the opening here, and I'm going to put it on my, on my front piece. Because if I were to put it on here, I guess now that I've marked it, I could put it really close to the edge and that would be fine. But... I believe the instructions say to put it on the exterior piece. All right, now I'm going to start taking the tape off. Taking, sorry, taking the paper off the tape. I don't want to take the tape off, itself off. And then I'm going to try and reposition the opening on the trim piece. So match up that top edge and match up my edge of my front piece with my mark. And then I'll do the same on this side. And then I'm gonna press down, flip it over, make sure that all of the tape, there. So I've got this one on. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take the lining piece and do the same thing again. The reason I have so many clips on these is that I actually glued it down. Facing part of my fabric here. I got I trimmed this too short in some or too small in some spots. Um, it says half to three quarters of an inch and obviously in this section it's only three eighths which makes it harder to keep it over um, to the back. So all right so I'm going to go back and I'm going to oh yeah I need to put the tape on first. this over and position it along the marks that I made. So I'm going to lift it up so I can see and position that there and clip. Do it on the other side. Put a clip. And there we go. Press it down. So now we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to stitch around the long edge. All right, back at the machine, and we're going to top stitch just the, along the bottom edge. We're not going to do the, the short edge yet. That'll happen when we join the rest of the lining to the exterior. 
make sure that your facing pieces are under. Change it to a top stitching stitch length, mine is five, and about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And go very, go slow. You want to make sure that this looks nice because you're going to be able to see these stitches. All right, so we've added the half circle trim to um, both of the lining pieces and uh, the exterior pieces. And I've also added the Decaville light to the um, exterior pieces. We can go ahead and set these aside and move on to the next step. All right, in this next step, we are going to um, construct a couple different things. We're gonna do the, the connectors for the crossbody strap, adding it to the gusset. And we're going to construct our crossbody strap. So first off, we'll just take the um, little strap connectors. And I've already marked down the center, a line down the center, and I've put my double-sided tape on it already. I'm going to take the, the paper off the back of the tape and fold the edges in to the center line. And if you have a seam roller, this would be a good time to use them to roll these out, make the sides crisp. So we've got the two connectors there. So now I'm going to flip them over. We're not going to stitch them yet. We'll stitch them once we put them on to the um, gusset. So I'm going to get a little bit of um, double-sided tape, just a little bit. Where are my snips? And I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it closer to the bottom. Okay, that's a little more than I needed. It's probably not for both. So I've got it on there, and now I'm going to put on my D-rings. I'm going to fold it over, peel the paper backing off of the double-sided tape, and then I'm going to fold it down to meet, and then I'm going to fold the bottom up to meet so that we meet not quite in the center. We don't want to get the tape on our... Um, hardware so I'm trying to keep it far enough away that it won't get on the hardware so there I put that now I'll do the same thing for this side where's my other D ring so again put the D ring on so we want the we want the flat side the back side of the um, strap connector with the flat side of the D ring peel off the tape or peel off the paper if I can get it. Right, there we go. And then fold the top down to meet about halfway through where I stuck the tape. So I only put uh, this edge down about halfway through where I stuck the tape. Now I'm going to fold up the other end, end to match. And I will clip it to hold it. Hold it together. All right. Now we need. Um, we'll probably put it, use the tape a little bit more, so I won't put it away completely. Now we need to add it to the gusset. So I've got my gusset piece. I am going to use my silver pen, and I am going to mark a line down from the top according to the instructions. And that's where we're going to put our. Let me see how much is that one. find the center. I'm going to just, I want to center it. So I'm going to put a mark here, fold it in half and put a mark there. That is the center. And then, I, so I'll just draw a little cross here. And that's the center of my, my gusset piece. Do the same on the other side. I'm going to line up one of my number lines crossways with the lo straight line there that I drew and and then I'm just going to make it a across so it's 90 degrees all right I have both of them so now I'm going to take and put a little bit more double-sided tape 
Again, not very much. My machine doesn't like double-sided tape. That's partly why I um, glued the um, glued the trim, the back of the trim pieces, because my machine, if I get into that, it's not going to like it. So I'm going to just, these are too long. Find uh, this double-sided leather tape sticks really nice, but it does gum up my needle. All right, so then grab the other one and the same thing. I'm just putting it, trying to place it so that it's not going to be in my stitch line. And our stitch lines are around the outside. So if I've got it in the middle and I'm doing one eighth from all the way around, I should be fine. So now I'm going to take my, take one of these, take the um, paper off the back of the tape and try and line it up centered. So I want this edge to be along that line and I want to center it on the mark that I made along that mark. Oops. Okay. And do the same for the other side. And there we go. So I've lined it up against the line I drew across and centered on, fairly centered on the gusset. So I'm going to set these aside. We'll do the um, crossbody strap and then we'll, we will turn around and stitch. Okay, moving on to the crossbody strap. There's um, a shoulder strap and a crossbody strap um, option. So you can, this it should go together the same way from what I understand. I'm doing the crossbody strap. So I've got two pieces here. One of them is a little wider than the other. You can kind of see the one on the bottom here is wider than the one on the top. But we're going to do the same thing for both of them. So I'm going to, I've got double-sided tape. I've marked down the center. I've got my double-sided tape. I'm going to start peeling the double-sided, the paper off. And then I'm going to start in a bit and push my faux leather up to the line, like the long edge up to the line. And we want, we don't want to start right at the end because we want to keep it, um, we want to keep it straight. And there is a tendency if you start at one end and just keep going straight down to the other that you can actually twist your fabric. And then you end up, one of the ways you can end up with twisty straps. So, so move down a bit. I'm going to do this and I'm going to work my way all the way down. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to start in the center. And I'm butting these edges right up against each one another. So I'm not leaving a gap. Sometimes when we make a, um, a, a strap and it folds over on itself again, we will leave a space, but we don't need to leave a space because this one is gonna go on top of that one. And we will do the same for this one. I don't need to walk you through it. We'll do exactly the same thing for this one. So speed up the video. Right, we got both of them done. I put a little clip on this end because I didn't get tape all the way to the end. So now we're going to want to put one on top of the other. And actually, if you want, you can run you can run um, double sided tape down the center if you want to help keep. I may do that. I'm going to use my thin double sided tape so I don't risk. 
I can actually use this one so I don't risk um, stitching it. So I'm just going to put the tape down the center. This is the wider of the two straps. I'm just going to run it right, try and keep it right in the center. Okay, I'm going to um, start taking the backing off the tape on one end. I'm not going to take it all off yet. I'm going to take the other one and I am going to put, this is the side with this, the join. So I'm going to put the two wrong sides together. So there, the, this is the wrong side. It has the join on it. So I'm going to put it to right side or wrong sides together with the wider strap. And then I'm actually going to put a clip in it just to try and keep it together on the end. And then we want to evenly um, put the, the top one on evenly side to side. I, I think it's what a sixteenth of an inch on either side. We want it in the center. We don't want it too far to one side or the other. We want it pretty centered. Actually, it looks like it doesn't, there's some on the end. So back up a bit. So it looks like there are doesn't start immediately. It looks like there's a couple inches on either side. So I'm going to... So we're centering, we need to center the th thinner strap on top of the uh, thicker strap. So I know the difference between the lengths, so I just split that difference in half and I've marked a line and I will start the thinner strap at that line. And then center on on top of the wide one, as well as centered side to side or lengthwise on the wide one. Go and stick that all the way down. I probably want to take the tape off of this end because I shouldn't have put tape there. All right, there we go. And now we're going to turn around to the machine and we're going to stitch both of these, um, this and then the connectors onto the, the gusset. All right, I'm going to start with um, top stitching these um, straps. And then um, I'm probably going to switch out my, my presser feet to get a little closer to the um, hardware on this. So we'll go ahead and do this first. So we want to start, even though we don't have any um, any tape, we, this one doesn't come all the way down here, we still want to do um, a top stitching on it. So I'm going to actually flip it over to the other side and I'm going to top stitch from this side um, an eighth of an inch away from the edge. All the way all the way down, around, and back up the other side. And actually, I, yeah, it doesn't say to go across the top or the bottom, just down the sides. So I put it on a um, top stitching stitch length. I have mine at five. And there we go. Our strap is done. Well, it's top stitched. I'm just going to grab the hardware and then we'll install the hardware. All right, now it's time to add the hardware to the crossbody strap. So with the strap, um, the longer side with the center seam up, so the shorter side, shorter piece is on top, we need to add our swivel or our slider. So this was a piece I forgot to show at the beginning um, for the crossbody strap, but we need it. So anyways, I'm going to slide it in the back side, fold it over top of the center bar, and then I'm going to fold it under like that, 
and then over and, and we want it to be this center part here that I folded under we want it up to the bar and we want the folded part here to cover up this um, raw edge so basically like that I'm going to grab grab a couple clips here I'm going to figure out where I want the rivet because we're going to rivet these I don't think my machine will get in that close so I'm going to rivet it right about there so I have my hole press I have two of these I have one to punch a hole which is this one and I have one to actually set the rivet so I'm going to line up move these out of the way and I'm going to line my hole up on my rivet press I punch the hole and then I'm going to take one of my so this is the these are double uh, capped rivets so there's two caps one on that one and one there I'm going to take the one with the post and I'm going to stick it in through the back and it pops out there and then I'm going to pop this on top and usually they they pop on um, not all the time but usually they do so I'm going to just turn around my other press is right behind me and I'm going to just set this rivet all right so there we go I've set that one so now this is the strap I'm going to put it wrong side facing up so this is where we it meets there I'm going to put this side up go all the way over to the other end I'm going to take one of my swivel clasps and I'm going to put it kind of hanging down off of it so the flat side here will go against here and we're going to put it on make sure that this is the back all the way across now I'm going to take this end still wrong side to wrong side and slip it up through the one side down through the other side so our, our slider looks like this now and our swivel hook is on the outside like that and now I'm going to put this back upside down again and we're going to add the other swivel hook so I'm going to put it on again so that it's hanging down I'm going to fold this end in and then fold it over again to cover up that raw edge stick a clip or two in it grab my silver marking pen and mark where I want the rivet to go right about there I can then punch the hole in it like that I'm going to stick the post through the back side if if it doesn't come all the way through you can move um, sometimes when they get dull they don't want to cut all the way through like this one you can line it up you can do it again sometimes that'll work pull it up and I sometimes snip it to get it out of the way now I'm going to put this in this side and the cap on the back side and there that popped now I'm going to turn around and set this rivet and there we go so we've got swivel hooks on either end and a slider in the middle so this strap is all done and we'll move on to working on the gusset piece all right I've swapped out my uh, presser foot to be um, just foot the toe on the one side normally I have toe on either side this one just has the one on the uh, left hand side so I'm going to now stitch on these and I'm going to try and get as close as I can to the hardware without making a mess so I'm gonna start going across the top and I will backstitch um, the instructions say to pull it through to the other side I will just backstitch because that's the way I prefer to do it And there we go got one 
on, stitched on, I'm pulling it a little bit to pop things to the back, threads to the back, loose threads. And then I'm going to grab my lighter and I'm just going to melt those threads. Now I, you can add, I'll probably go and add a rivet right about here afterwards and then we can wipe off um, the marks. You don't want to leave them on too long just in case they don't come off but um, I'm hoping it hasn't been that long and it will come off. So do the other one and then we can add the rivets. All right, I've punched the holes for the rivets. I'm going to, this is how I store my um, rivets. So I'm going to grab a couple, they're just small ones. And I, I'm, I don't think it really matters, but I like to stick the um, post in from the front. So, and then I'll pop the cap on the back and do the same for the other side post in from the front. Not, now I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to set the rivets and then we will move on to the next step. All right, it's time now to add the magnetic snaps to the um, top trim pieces. So there's four trim pieces. All of them should have Decaville light on them. Two of them had marks on them. So the two that have the marks, we take them, we take a washer, center the washer over the mark, and then draw lines where we're gonna cut the holes for the prongs of the magnetic snap. So we wanna keep, We've got a female one on here, so this one he, on this side will be another female. So you want to keep females on the same side and males on the other side. So I put that on. I've already cut holes, and this is Decaville heavy. I When I get I cut a piece of Decaville, if there's a little scrap left over, I'll cut up the little scraps into squares, rectangles, so that I have um, something to put on rivets, magnetic snaps, etc., to help reinforce. So I put the um, piece of Decaville Heavy on and then I'll put the washer on and do the same. So there's the male snap. I'll put the other male here. I have the holes in that piece of Decaville Heavy and I'll pop that on. So now I'm going to spread the um, prongs. I like to spread them open because if you spread them, if you put them on top, one on like in towards the inside, then you've got prong on top of prong and then it adds extra like it makes it thicker so when you put these together you've already got a spot where you can feel the magnet it just makes it even larger that spot if you fold them in on themselves but it's it's completely up to you you can do it whatever way you want I've chosen to spread them out all right so there we go we've got those and we can so these top panels have a slight angle to them. So the top is narrower than the bottom. So we want to make sure that we've got, actually, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to put a T on the top of all my pieces, just so I know. This will help later. So this is the top. And this is the top. And now I'm going to take them and clip them together to make sure that they, they yeah, they line up pretty well. Put, so I use duct tape and I put them on the back of the magnetic snaps so that the prongs went, that won't rub through. Now there's a piece of Decaville light there, probably be okay, but I'm still going to put it on anyways just to be on the safe side so the prongs don't rub through the fabric on the outside because these will be on the inside of the top panel so so it doesn't rub through the exterior part. So I'll put them on and then I'm gonna rub it a bit 
to try and make sure it sticks to everything. And there we go. Do the other one. All right, so staying with the trim pieces, um, we want to mark, I think I marked it after the fact, after I've put the uh, magnetic snaps on, but this would have been a lot easier to do if I had done it before putting the snaps on. We need to, based on the measurements given, mark a line from the top. So I've marked all my tops and uh, I've put a line on. We will eventually be folding the top end down to meet the line. So go ahead if you haven't done it already, I would I would recommend doing it before you put your snaps on. But if you haven't done it already, mark the line down as per the instructions. And then we're going to put the pieces right sides together. So we want to put the two magnetic snap pieces together. These are for the lining side. And I am I don't need to clip it, but I'm going to put clips in anyways. So I've got clips on that side, clips on this side. And we're going to, I'll do the other one. So make sure that the tops, I've got the top up at the top, matching my top marks. You can also tell if you've got them off because they won't, you can see they don't line up very well. There is an angle, an angle on the sides. So we want to make sure we maintain that angle. So top to top, clipping on the side, I'm just gonna clip the center. I don't need that many clips. And now we're going to stitch along just the short side with the uh, seam allowance given in the instructions. So I'm on a um, joining stitch length and I'm just going to go down either on both sides. So I'm gonna back tack at the start and the end of my seams and I will do all four. All right, now that we have all of the um, side seams sewn, we're going to open them up. Actually, I'll do it on this one. I'm gonna open it up and I'm going to butterfly the seam. So open it, putting um, the spreading, basically the seam allowances to either side. So butterflying the seams. And now we're gonna stitch down either side, all four of them, either side of all four seams um, with a top stitch. So I've got the five stitch length. I'm going to do Back tack at the beginning in the beginning, cut across back and do all four of them and then we'll come back. go we've got the side seams all done so now we've got the loops so there's the top top all right so I'm going to take now we want to take the top and we're going to fold down the edge to that line um, you can use double-sided tape I may off camera so I'm gonna just do it fold it over now so you can see what it looks like but off screen I'll probably use some glue to glue it down and then I'm just gonna clip it for now I'm just going to clip it in place but I'll glue it down and then clip it back so we're folding it down to meet that line this finishes off the top edge and uh, eventually like at the very end we will sew the two top edges together once it's all once the bag has all been put together so I'm going to clip around this and the other one so if you keep the sides um, even if you keep the sides even, then this line should be even. If it's not even, like if you have uh, mismatched up at the top seam here, your line could be off. So just try and make your seam, side seams as even as possible. If not, then just draw, try to um, blend it from one side to the other, just to make it even. You don't want this side to fold it over more than this side or it may not match when we go to sew the exterior to the lining. So yeah, there's some spots where precision is more important and getting this on, since we're going to be joining these at the end, is a little more important than some other spots. All right, so I've done this one. I'll go off screen and do the other one. And uh, we just 
leave it like that until we go to add it at the end. So time to move on to the next step. Now we're going to sew the gusset onto the exterior panels. The first thing I'm going to do is find, try and find the center of the bottom, the exterior panel, center bottom of the exterior panels. So I'm just gonna fold them in half. I am looking to match up the seams of the, the um, trim piece. And then I'm just snipping a little bit out of the center, which will give me the center notch. Put those there. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the um, gusset. So line that up. And I'm just going to take a little snip out of each of them, each side. Do both sides. There we go. And before I go any further, I'm just going to get a Kleenex and wipe off my marks. All right, most of the uh, markings came off. I did leave it on a little too long, even though I suggested to you guys to take it off as soon as possible. I didn't do what I suggested. So I grabbed a, um, what is it, a Q-tip, and I have some lemon nail polish remover. So I'm using that on this Morifo leather. It seems to be fine. It's not taking off the finish, but I wouldn't, I'm not going to recommend this for every type every type of uh, faux leather because it will take the finish off of some things and it's actually a little bit blue so it's probably starting to take off the finish and then I grab a, a Kleenex and wipe the rest of it off um, yeah if you're going to try that try it on a small te test it on a small piece first before doing it to your bag all right it's time to add the gusset to the exterior pieces I have gone ahead and I have found and notched out the center of the gusset and I've also found the center notch on each of the exterior pieces. I'm going to put one aside. So taking the gusset, putting it right sides together with the exterior piece, I'm going to match up the notches and then put a clip in. I'll do a couple clips on either side just to hold it um, hold it still. Now I'm going to take the other end of the gusset and put it right up at the top of the panel piece and I'm going to start clipping. You want to make sure that your D-rings and such are out of the way so I'm going to start clipping along the side. And when we get to the um, corner of the exterior we're going to cup this in. So we're going to basically bend the exterior piece. Let me get this there. Bend the exterior piece. If you've got your deck of a light in the right spot, it should bend just up to there. And we're going to push, push the edge down in like that. And then I'm going to clip again. I am clipping with my, I'm putting my clips facing towards my gusset because I will um, stitch with my gusset facing up. So like that, you can see it's rounded because the shape of the bag is round. So then we cup it in and um, to get it to fit around. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And sometimes it's easier to flip it around and push, I'm pushing it in, I'm kind of pulling up on the X, on the gusset piece with my index finger and pushing it in with my thumb to kind of try and fit it around the corner. And remember that we are stitching in, like we have a seam allowance. So we want this, where the seam allowance is, it needs to be flat. The top part here doesn't need to be flat. It's where we're going to stitch the seam allowance that needs to be flat. All right, so I've got, I've got my gusset clipped on. I am going to change the camera angle and we're, we'll stitch this on now. All right now we'll go ahead and we will stitch the gusset on. I have my gusset right side up and we will follow the um, overall pattern seam allowance. So I've got mine at a three and a half stitch length. 
and I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and the end of the seam. Make sure when you're going around the corner that you're, um, let's see, that you're going slow around the corner and that you catch everything. So on the other corner, I snipped it because it was just not sitting nicely. I'm hoping by pulling this up and following the curve, it will um, it will actually stitch in place. If it if I can't, then I may have to snip the uh, gusset. Mine's just way too tight, so I'm going to I snip the gusset. to relieve some of the tension. All right, now we're going to um, fold this back on itself. So we want the seam allowance to go away from the center panel and we want the gusset to lie on top of the seam allowance. So we are going to go through and we're going to top stitch all the way around the bag. So I'm gonna use my five stitch length and there so uh, I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end and I'm going to take it slow I'm going to be pulling the fabric gently pulling the fabric away so that it's right on this like we've got the seam nice and tight and crisp so and try and keep your hardware out of the way There we go, the one side is done. Looks good, you take it easy and, and smooth it out as you go. Um, the other one is gonna be tight. The other side's gonna be a little tighter to do, but I think it looks great, the top stitching. So now we're gonna, I'm going to clip this piece on just like I did the, the big first piece. I'm going to stitch it around just like I did the first piece and then I'll try and record the top stitching um, because clipping it and sewing it on is uh, the same so I, I will have it inside out so it's the same for both sides the just the the part that's different will be the top stitching of this piece so I'll do that off camera and uh, when we come back we'll try and top stitch the second um, exterior piece. Okay, you got this side stitched on. Now I had to go ahead and, and snip those, um, the corners as well, clip the corners so that it would fit in nicely. Now I'm going to try, put it on a five stitch length, and I am going to try to top stitch this. So I'm going to start, we want the seam allowance to go towards the gusset. So pulling the yeah, I may not even be able to see. Pulling the bag like that. And we're gonna stitch again on the gusset with uh, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The seam allowance, or yeah, the seam allowance here is going towards the gusset. So go very slow and try and maneuver it as you can, keeping this as flat as you can. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Keeping your hardware out of the way. The bag is, flexible enough that you might be able to scrunch it out of the way.
All right, top stitching is done. Just gonna turn it right side out to see if it looks okay, if I missed anywhere. So it's not the easiest thing to do, top stitching. I, I started with the front, so I've got the really nice top stitching along the front. Um, the back side top stitching, it's okay. It's not the greatest. I had a few spots where it got a little tight. Um, but otherwise, it's done. It's harder to stay on the edge to do it. Um, if you have arthritis, I don't recommend it. So you can decide whether you want to top stitch. It's the way the pattern is designed with the top stitching. It looks great. Um, but if you can't handle it, I'm sure it will be fine without the top stitching. So I found that tricky to do. I'm not going to lie. It was uh, definitely tricky, but I think it looks great. So um, there we go. Top stitching done. It's time to move on to the next step. Now we're going to work on adding the zippered pocket to the um, interior uh, lining panel. So I have measured based on the um, instructions, the measurements and the instructions, um, how far down it needs to be. This is my zipper facing. I have added the, I don't know if you can see it, I have put the lines on it and made, this is the box or zipper box right in here. And we want to put it centered so far down from this um, trim, half circle trim. So we want to center it on there. And now we're going to stitch around this box. And I am going to, so I'm going to put my needle down right on the corner. I'm going to make sure I have a small stitch length and I'm actually going to make it a three instead of a, a, a three and a half, which I normally do. And now we're going to stitch um, I'm just going to go down either side of this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go down either side of this box. You can go on the edges. You can stitch down the short edges, but uh, let me see. Yeah, the instructions suggest just to go down either side of this box. So I'm going to hold my tails. And I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Want it right on the corner, and I'm going to back stitch. Lift up my presser foot and go down the other side. All right, so now I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to cut right in the center. And I'm going to cut over, get right down the center. You can draw, you can draw the lines in and the line right down the center if you want. I've done this enough that I just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it really lopsided. So I'm just gonna cut down the center. And when I get to between three quarters and a half inch away from the, from the corners, the other end, I'm going to cut into the corner like that without cutting my stitches. So then I'll go and I'll cut into the other corner again without. So it kind of looks like that. We'll go and do the other side. And again. There we go. All right. So now we want to push this towards the back. So I'm going to um, push it, I'm going to push it up first and I'm going to finger press it, bring it down and finger press. And the edges can be finger pressed. And then we're going to push it all the way through to the back. And it's probably best if you um, can iron it to iron it. I'm going to see how it goes just clipping it. So I'm putting flat clips on and pulling this, the corners a little bit to, to try and flatten them out so that we get nice, uh, rec nice points in our corners. 
so they look nice. And it's ideal to have the um, facing pulled back far enough so you see a little bit of the exterior or the lining fabric on the inside of the facing. That way you're not seeing the facing fabric on the outside of the zipper uh, box. You can use double-sided tape if you want to, to tape this down. I'm just going to try and clip it and see if I can get it to work like this. All right, so now that I got it to the back like this, I am going to go and take it to my iron and steam it and try and press it nicely. And there we go. I have steamed the uh, zipper box and um, it's all nice and pressed. It's time to move on to the next part of the zipper pocket, which will be adding the zipper in between these two pieces. All right, so now we're on to the zipper pocket part. So I've got the top panel here and I'm just going to turn it over face down and then I'm going to take my zipper and put it face down on top of it. Grab some clips and just clip it into place. You can, if you need double-sided tape, you can use double-sided tape. You can use other clips. Um, this is just the way I like to do it. So we're putting it, it seems weird because we're putting it face down and when the zipper comes this way, it'll still be, you see the back of here and the right side of the zipper. But when it goes on inside the zipper box, it will actually be correct because this will be the inside of the pocket. And you'll see the back side of the zipper because this will be poking out the front, which is actually the way we want it. So I'm just going to move my clips. And now I want to stitch this on. So I'm just going to three and a half stitch length and I'm going to sew it on with the recommended seam allowance. So right along this edge that we clipped, I'm going to uh, start, I'm going to um, backstitch at the beginning and the end of my seam lines. So now I want to flip this pocket piece up away from the zipper. There we go. So if you have your zipper pull already on, you need to follow the instructions on where the pull will be. Being that I don't have my, my zipper pull or slider on right now, I, I have freedom to just do this and then I will add it before we put it into the um, zipper box. All right, so there we go. So now I want to place, all right, so I'm going to put this piece down and then I'm going to put the other side. So we've already got something stitched on this side, so I'm going to add it to this side. And I'm going to try and keep my um, pocket pieces in line on the sides because we don't want it all wonky. We want to want it nice and even. Again, stitch down this side here with the recommended seam allowance. And now again, we want to push the um, bottom part. So the seam is down there, the seam is there and we're gonna push it towards the seam allowance. So keep the zipper tape straight. The pocket part pieces can bend, the zipper um, tape should stay flat. So some people top stitch this. A we're going to top stitch them now to keep them open. So now I'm going to put it to a top stitch length and I'm going to top stitch right along the edge on both sides. And then I'm going to, I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end of the seam. There we go. All right, now it's time for me to put my zipper slider on and I want my zipper closing in this direction. So if I take a look at the teeth before I separate them, you see there's a coil on the right side that it's up top and then it's so they alternate and that's what helps them stay closed. So I've got a uh, coil at the top on the right, left, right, left. So I'm gonna break it apart 
And I want to make sure that I have this side at the top and being the first coil in and then this back and forth. If I keep it like that, then I know it will close correctly and there won't be any wonkiness or um, bubbles in the seam. So I'm going to push that down until it pops and then go and look. And sure enough, I have it the right side first, then left, right, left. And it also looks okay in this direction. So I'll push it in a little further and you can see not, there isn't a bulge on one side versus the other. It's pretty even. So I'm going to put this in the center, somewhat the center. And I'm going to grab my piece, my, my uh, lining piece, and I'm going to try and center it over this um, zipper pocket. So, so the um, a zipper facing is the same width as the zipper pocket. So if the facing is right over to the edge, then we've pretty much got it centered. So I've got it there. You can use tape if you want, double-sided tape if you want. I'm just going to try doing it from here without tape. And I'm going to start it just down from my zipper pull. So my zipper pull is actually behind my, my uh, presser foot at the moment. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to, um, I'm going to lower mine to a four stitch length. It's kind of between a top stitch and a, and a joining stitch. But anyway, so I'm going to try and keep the zipper as straight as possible in the zipper box. And I will back stitch a bit, not a lot, and hold my threads. When I get down to the corner, my needle is down, and I pivot, and I come across the zipper teeth, and then I turn, and I'm doing approximately an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm going to start coming up this side, and when I get close to my uh, zipper slider, I'm going to lift my, my needle is down, and I'm going to move my uh, slider all the way over to the other side, and continue on. You want to make sure that your pocket isn't getting caught. So I'm just going to snip this off and the underneath one so they don't get caught. And then continue on to where I started. Pull it out and trim off my threads. Right, so now that the zipper is in, we're going to, I'm going to flip this over. Actually, I'm going to move my zipper slider back to the center. I'm going to flip this over, take this piece, and match it up along the top and the sides. Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to clip it along the top. And then I'm going to, okay, I've creased it down here, and I'm going to run my scissors along the bottom edge here because I want this pocket open. We're going to use this pocket to help close up um, the bottom of the bag later. So I've done that and I'm going to clip along, put clips in along here. I can clip the bottom but we're not going to sew the bottom. Clipping the bottom will just help keep everything squared. Now I'm going to flip the flip this over and I'm going to expose this side and I'm going to stitch up the side um with the uh let's see with the recommended seam allowance. So I want to make sure I've got it on I got it on a three and a half stitch length. So I found in the past that I probably can take these out. Yeah, I found in the past that if I roll up the ends that it will help me in the help me later when I want to get a nice clean edge closing the pockets. So I'm going to fold that up. I just folded both pieces up towards me. I'm gonna back stitch and then sew all the way up, across, and down the other side, and then I will explain what I do on the other side.
So now we're coming down the other side. I'm going to continue this fold all the way over. Crease it. And then I'm going to make sure that I stitch over this at this end. So now we can take the bottom of the pocket and pop that seam over and it flips it over nicely and it gives us a nice seam allowance so that when we go to close it we can go and press this if we want finger press it or you can go and actually press it and uh, there we go that's the zipper pocket is in so now I'm gonna leave it in the center if you open it you can see the lining I'm just gonna leave it in the center and uh, ah, now we'll move on to the next step Moving on to the faux trim slip pocket, we have these two pocket pieces and we're going to put them right sides together. First, I'm going to match up, match the short or the long sides up on across one side and then I'll come across and match them up and clip them on the other side. So actually I'm going to stitch it along this side first and then I will pull it over and match it up on the other side just so I don't pop any um, clips. So I'm going to stitch it, joining stitch and um, needle down and back stitch at the beginning and the end of the seam and then we'll move on to the other side. And now we'll pull it over and do the other side. So this will cause it to curve and that is correct. That is what we want. All right, now we're going to turn it right side out. So I just put my hand in, grab the other end and pull it through. And then we need to decide what side we want peeking out the top since the exterior fabric doesn't really matter. Like this fabric is all the same. I just want which side has a little nicer finish. So I'm going to, um, I want this side being the peaking, the part that peeks out. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it so that it's even. So this bottom part here will be even all along the bottom edge. And so I, sometimes I have to stick my fingers in to push it out, um, roll it between your fingers. And then I'm probably going to end up taking it to the iron to iron it to make sure I get those creases in there before I stitch it onto the other lining piece. There we go. And then if we put everything out flat, we end up with something that looks like this. So this, I'm going to go take it to my iron now and I'm going to um, steam it well so that it uh, has nice edges. And then I'll be back. All right, back from the iron. Um, I started steaming it and then I realized I wanted the um, seam allowance to go up because we're going to top stitch this. So I kind of thought it'd be nice if the seam allowance went up into the um, trim up top here. So once I've got this top stitched, I'm going to take it back and steam it some more because uh, when I was trying to get it to go back up, to the top after steaming it the other way it um, didn't really want to go so anyways I'm going to top stitch I'm just going to do it at here at about an eighth of an inch up from that edge you can do um, another one up from the other side if you want it's up to you I just I'm just going to do the one because I really do want to see the uh, dragonflies on this so Five stitch length. All right, there we go. I've top stitched it. Now, before I add it to the lining of the bag, I am going to go back and um, steam it again to try and get some of these creases out. All right, all steamed out. I have grabbed the uh, l second lining piece and I have marked up from the cutout corners the amount specified in the pattern. And now I'm just going to, let's see, I need to find the, find the center. 
So fold this in half and crease. So I've got a little bit of a crease there. I'm just going to mark it with my air erasing pen. And then I'm going to find the center on the pocket. And I guess that's probably good enough. I guess I can mark that with my air erasing pen. And I want it lined right up along that line. I'm just going to clip along the side, either side, to try and keep it in, in its spot. I'm going to start at the top here with a um, top stitch um, length stitch. And I'm going to, actually, I'm going to go along the bottom first. Because I'll probably do the sides from the other, from the back side. Because my pocket's a little bigger than the, pa than the pattern piece. Yep. And then basically one eighth of an inch up from the um, edge, I'm going to be top stitching this pocket onto the lining piece. So. Got it stitched on at the bottom. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to stitch it up an eighth of an inch away from the edge. This way I can actually see where the edge of the uh, lining fabric is. I'm actually going to go up from the bottom on the other side too, just so that it, um, if I go down from the top, it could end up squishing it down and then I end up with a bunch down there. At least if if it stretches a little bit coming up towards the top, there is room for it to move. So needle down. And now I'm going to trim up the side so that they're even. Trim the excess off the sides. I'm not cutting the lining fabric. I'm only cutting the excess pocket fabric off. All right, now I'm going to want to um, so I make a, I think I'm going to make a line in the center. All right, so that's the center. Hmm. I think I usually do. So in the pattern, she's got uh, measurements from either side. If you want pen pockets on the side and then a larger pocket in the center. Um, yeah, I think I'm actually going to follow that when this comes around. Yeah, I think I'll follow that. So I'll just follow the measurements as she's got in the, um, pattern, create the two pockets, one on either side. While I've marked it up into here, I don't think I'm actually going to stitch all the way up. I think I'm going to put rivets in there. So I'm going to start from the bottom and put my needle down right at the bottom. I'm still on top stitch length. I'm going to stitch up to, to the bottom of the trim and then turn around and go back down. And now I'm going to take a lighter and I'm just gonna melt some of these ends. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. There we go. We've got the pocket in. I am going to put a couple dots up here. And these are where I'm going to press put holes in for the for my, This time I'm just going to use my rotary hole punch. So I'm going to put holes in he, either side for rivets. So now I've got the holes in there. I'm going to, I have to go out and find it, but I have some um, fray check. So I'm going to go and put some fray check on these cause this is all cotton, this will fray. And I don't want it to fray around these holes with the rivets in. So I'm gonna go find my fray check, put fray check on there, set it with the iron, pop a couple of my little pieces of Decaville Heavy on either side, and then I'm going to install some rivets. 
There's another good piece. So I'll do that all off camera, and then when we come back, we'll move on to the next step. All right, I got the rivets in. There's one on either side of the pocket at the top to hold it. I've fray checks underneath, and I've got the Decaville Heavy in behind this. So that will keep it from pulling out. So now we want to join the two lining pieces together. So I'm going to flip them right sides together. I'm going to clip along the bottom. We're not going to sew the bottom or the corners right now. We'll do that at the end. But I want to keep everything lined up. So I'm going to clip these. And then I'm going to clip up both sides, making sure that the corners, the, the cutout corners for the box corners are even. There we go. And now we'll do the other side. Again, making sure the boxed corners nice and square. Okay, and now we're going to stitch up the sides um, with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now, these these pattern pieces, sometimes with pattern um, with lining pieces, we have to um, take out more, like increase our seam allowance as we get towards the bottom. These pattern pieces have already been altered so that you don't have to do that a little bit has already been taken out so that they will fit nicely in there so we want to follow the actual seam allowance given in the pattern don't increase it or you could end up making it too narrow right and adjoining stitch length so i've got uh three and a half millimeter back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam We've got the lining side sewn up and we will leave the bottom. I'm going to take my clips off now. We'll leave the bottom and the corners and we will do that when we finish the bag. Okay, now it's time to put the um, exterior and the lining together. So I have um, turned my exterior uh, wrong side out and I have my lining right side out. So I'm going to be sticking the lining inside the exterior. So I wanna decide, okay, which is the back? So this is the front, this side's the back, and I want my, I prefer my zipper pockets at the back. So I'm just going to turn it this way so that my slip pocket is at the front, and I'm just gonna put it in like this with the zipper pocket towards the back. I'm going to line up these, um, tr the trim pieces, and I'm going to clip them on both sides. There we go. And now I'm going to put it down, and I'm going to stitch just around the inside of these, um, the top, the, um, half circle trim piece according to the uh, seam allowance given in the pattern. So I'm going to do both of them. I will back tack at the start and the end of the seam and then we can move on. Making sure you have a joining stitch length. Now we're going to turn this right side out. So pull the, all of the lining out. And push out the bottom of the bag. And now we're going to tuck in the, tuck in the lining inside the bag. So folding at, so we have the nice curve here. thread looks like it's a little loose. I'm going to go off camera and tighten that up a bit because I don't really want the teeth showing.
All right, so I ended up tightening my tension and just flipping it so that I could stitch over the line again. It's still got a little bit of teeth showing, but it's better than it was. So I'm just going to clip this because I want I want it to be nice and even the top, the front, inside and the outside. I want them to be nice and lined up. So I'm going to put it clip, put a clip in it, push push out the seam, and then put a clip in it. And I want to try and keep the edges lined up nicely. So the inside and the outside lined up nicely. And then we'll do the other side. Right. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, flatten my lining seam and try and match it to the center of the gusset. And then I'm going to put a clip in it. And I want to line up all these raw edges as well because we're going to baste across those and then top stitch this piece. I'm going to actually turn my bag right uh, inside out so that I can top stitch properly. I could, if I wasn't doing this on camera, I would take off my table and I could do it nicely with the cylinder arm. But being that I'm on camera doing a tutorial, I will turn it right inside out and then sew it on like a, this is a flatbed. Should have probably turned it before I put the clips on. Right, so I'm going to start at the back. Um, I'm just going to start with the basting across the sides and then so basting and the top stitching is all going to be done with a five stitch length. I'm going to do it all eighth of an inch. So basically I'm sewing an eighth of an inch all the way around. It's just the um, where the half circle, I want to call it handles, but where the half circles are, trim pieces are, that's going to be top stitch. So you want to make sure that they'll be, it'll be seen where this stuff will be hidden. So I'm going to start just inside this trim piece and then go all the way around. Take your time. Um, to get so you get everything nice nicely stitched and if you need to use your stiletto to help keep things down and in place so now I've got a bulky spot here I'm I don't have a hump jumper so I'm just gonna take some fabric that I got with my machine and put it under the presser foot so that I can get up onto the um, trim piece get to the corner turn and now I'm top stitching this part. we go we've got the front and the back um, stitched to or the lining exterior and the lining is stitched together so I'm just turning it right side out so we can have a look I'm going to have to steam this again all right yeah this little steaming should help get those out and there we go it's time to move on to the next step. All right, now it's time to start adding the top trim pieces. So I've glued my top edge down already and I want to match up. So I've also marked center parts on the sides of my bag. So I'm gonna start with the exterior trim piece. So I'm going to take the trim piece and I'm gonna put it over the top of the bag and pull it down so that it's in line with the top of the bag. So I'm going to find my marks and match the center seam up with the side marks on the bag and clip. And then I will go out from, to, from either, other, either side and add some more clips. Actually, I'm going to face them in. 
And now I'll come down to the other side and pop it over and I will match up the seams on this, the, the mark with the seam on this one as well. All right, now I'm going to put it under the machine and we're just going to top stitch on either end, do, or sorry, we're gonna baste on either end. So eighth of, a, eighth of an inch away from the side seams. I'm using a five stitch length and I just want to baste these two sides on before we add the lining piece. So I'm going to get it under my needle. I'm going to start on one trim piece and I'm going to uh, go all the way over to the side of the other trim piece, needle down. I'm going to back stitch at the start and the end of my basting seams. So here we go. Oh, ran out of bobbin, need to switch my bobbin and then we'll come back. All right, new bobbin in, back to where I left off. All right, now we're moving on to the lining, adding the trim piece to the lining. There we go. So I'm going to take this, I don't think it matters which direction the magnetic snaps are facing. I'm going to put the male snaps towards the front. That's just what I want to do. And I'm going to line up the side seams again with the side seams on the lining. Get my, make sure your hardware's out of the way. You don't want to snap a needle or break your machine because you hit it. So I'm going to line up the side seam from the top and uh, go out either side. I do the same thing basically as I did for the exterior piece, but I'm doing it with the lining. So all the way over. And I caught up my um, seam there if I wanted to. I could probably clip that out. I think I will to make it a little more even. Just Luckily, it was just the basting um, stitch that got it. So now that it's out flat. So on my way around the second time, I will try and make sure, because I did it on this side too, I'll try and make sure that I'm not picking up, not dragging this, that I keep it flat while I go around. And this time we will be doing a full, the full seam allowance given in the pattern um, to add, attach the out exterior top trim. So I'm going to, actually put mine down to three and a half stitch length now because I'm actually joining these pieces together and again I am going to go from I'm just going to stitch in between these two points for now and and do both sides back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam hopefully we'll be able to see this There we go. We've added the trim pieces to both the top or the ins the inside, interior and exterior. All right. Now that we have the um, trim all stitched on around the edge, we need to flip the trim up. So I'm going to start with the exterior and flip it up. And I'm going to continue this fold all the way across the uh, exterior trim piece. So it should be approximately a quarter of an inch that it's folded up because that's what we stitched the exterior on with. So I'm going to clip this on the handle, on the trim part, both sides. And now I'm going to flip up the lining trim. Get that 
So I'm going to start. I'm going to start uh, matching up the the exterior and lining trim pieces, making sure that the centers match. The exterior and the lining centers match on each side, and I will put a clip in it. I'm going to go around and match up the top seams on both pieces, exterior and lining, all the way around. Before I get too much further, I'm going to want to stitch it from the inside, so I'm going to turn my bag inside out. With my cylinder arm, I could um, just put it on the cylinder arm and it would be nice, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, this is a tutorial, so I will do it like it's a flatbed machine. But if you have a cylinder arm or if you have a free arm on your domestic machine, you don't need to turn it inside out. So now I'm going to continue to pin the rest of the way around, or clip the rest of the way around, keeping the top seems even. All right. And I'm also going to flip up the lining piece about a quarter of an inch so that it lines up with, I guess I'll use smaller clips, it lines up with the um, exterior piece. Because we want to, we want them both to line up. We want it to be even both on the top and the bottom of this trim piece. And there we go. We've got both sides even. So now I'm going to switch the view over to the machine and we are going to top stitch the ins the, the bottom part of the top trim and then we're going to finish it off top stitching around the top of the top trim. Now we're going to top stitch the uh, top trim piece. Hopefully this angle works. I, th I think it should. So I'm just going to put on a, a five stitch length and uh, we're, I'm going to start on the back and probably right in at the, I'm going to probably put my needle down in here and continue around the, uh, he, continue around the bottom edge. So I'm going to do the bottom edge first, then the top. So I'm going to try and start in an inconspicuous place and uh yeah go slow so that i can get a nice top stitch yeah and see you on the other side actually i yeah i usually stitch from the other direction but we'll try and make this one work and I'm going to leave my tails long. I will pull them through and hide them later. So I'm not going to backstitch on this. So here we go. All right, so I had to take the clips off um, the bag because they were just getting in the way. So now I'm going to go back around and clip the top. Uh, probably won't be in as many spots, just a few. Make sure it stays even. And this time we're going to go around and top stitch this at an eight with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, again, I'm going to start on this side. I ended up uh, missing, so I've just taken up, tied a knot, taken a lighter, melted the threads down. So I would normally hide them in, but uh, it was too far away and I didn't want to be poking more holes in this. So let's try and do this again. I'll start on the same side in the same, try to get it into the seam. 
and uh, I'm still on a five stitch length. And yeah, I won't back stitch again. Just gonna put my needle down, try and keep the, the edges lined up as much as possible. So here we go. And just watch out for your um, magnets because they will want to push things off. I'm just gonna lift, tuck this in and lift my bag up right by the magnet so that it's tries to keep it even on the way past. And we'll leave them long. So I've already pulled one of the threads through. So now I'm just gonna pull on the inside thread. It creates a loop right here. I'm going to grab the loop. You can use your stiletto if you want. I tend to use my tweezers. And then we're going to, I'm going to tie two knots and then try and so we'll out one and then I'll do the other side. And then I need to find, I'm going to take a pin and I am going to try and bury these into the seam or into, in between, maybe even be able to poke it out down here. It's a long way out. You could just trim them off at this point. Um, trim it off at this point and use the lighter or you can do, tie them off like that and then stick them in and try and get it so I don't want to put any more holes in my um, trim piece than I need to so yeah you can decide what you want to do um, I will do mine off camera switch the camera angle and then we can finish off the lining of the bag and the zipper pocket all right now it's time to close up the lining so we're going to open up our zipper pocket in here. I'm going to pull out the lining of the pocket and I'm going to reach my hand in and grab both sides of the uh, lining fabric and pull them out through the zipper pocket. I want to get it out as much as possible. So I'm going to take both sides of the lining the bottom of the lining and I'm going to clip this. We're going to start with the bottom and then we're going to box the corners. So, all right, now I'm going to stitch this closed with the uh, recommended seam allowance at three and a half stitch length. Back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam. Now I'm going to box the corners. So I'm going to take the corners, pull them out to the side, and I'm going to um, offset the seams. And I'm going to nest them together. So there's the one side. It seems to already be pulling to the, the left. So I'm going to fold the other seam down to the right. And I'm going to grab my clips and I'm going to clip it. I'll clip it in a couple spots. Do the same for the other side. Now we want to make sure since we've got the bottom seam going in this case to the left, I want to keep it all the way, like I want to keep that going to the left all the way across so it doesn't twist part way through because then it won't sit flat on the bottom of the bag. So in this case I've got the bottom seam going to the left and the side seam going to the right. And then I'm going to clip this again. And now I'm going to sew the, um, the boxed corners up with the recommended seam allowance. And we want to make sure that we keep the seams going in the correct direction um, while we're stitching it. So in the case of this seam, 
where it's facing forward on the top, I'm going to use probably my stiletto to make sure that it keeps going in that direction once we get there. So I'm going to back stitch, get up to the seam, I'm going to make sure that it's going in the right direction. You can back stitch across the, the center seam and then all the way across. Do the same for the other side. And now that I've got those um, bottom corners sewn, I'm just going to trim a little bit off so that we have less bulk inside the bag. Okay, I'm going to stick the lining back through the pocket, back into the bag. Make sure everything feels okay. Yep, it does. So I'm going to pull the pocket back out. And see, this is where the uh, folding the edges over helps with the uh, really nice clean edge. So I'm going to clip these. There you go. And now I'm going to stitch the pocket closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm leaving it on a number three stitch length because I want it to be a fairly sturdy seam. People are going to put stuff in the pockets and we want to make sure that the bottom of the pockets don't rip. So I'm going to start at the side, back stitch at the beginning and the end of the seam. And now we can tuck the uh, zipper pocket back inside the bag poking out the corners. I'm going to zip up the pocket, grab my, grab my crossbody strap and I'm going to clip it on, put the magnetics, close the magnetic snaps and it needs a good iron or good steaming. But there we have the Aphrodite Versa bag by Needle and Anchor. I um, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I uh, hope it helps. And if it does, please give it a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Um, subscriptions and likes and stuff helps with all of the YouTube algorithms. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and uh, see you next time. Mm -hmm.